Um, today we're going to be looking at adaptations that you need if you are looking to put uh, more than five or six hard drives inside of your workstation. Now I bought the Thermaltake uh, Level 20 uh, GT. It was the uh, RGB Plus probably about four years ago or three years ago when it first came out. <clears throat> Super excited. Its form factor is incredible. The problem that I had with it is that, uh, number one, um, it, it didn't have the ability to put a lot of um, hard drives in. So when I bought this uh, um, case, I thought we were going to put at least 10 hard drives in there. I ran into an immediate problem because of spacing and how these hard drive uh, uh, cages were created. Now, when you first get the case, you're going to run into two of these as options that are inside of your case. Now you get a total of four hard drives. That would be terrific if that's what you're going to run. Now for most people, the back side of the case, and we'll show that later on in a different video, you'll be able to put your, uh, your SSD drives inside if you wish to do that. Most people in a, in a case like that may think, well, it's going to be, it's really a water cooler case anyways. Well, on the off chance that you don't want it to be a case specifically to show off, but you actually want it to do work, well, if you want to turn it into a server slash workstation, you're probably going to have more than 10 uh, hard drives. Right now, as it's fitted, this is not an option for you. Now, what I was able to do is to cobble together another uh, Thermaltake uh, hard drive cage. This came out of the VU37. Uh, really nice and that gave me a total of seven. It looks hokey and if you look online right now and I was following this for quite some time you cannot buy these cages anymore. Um, Thermaltake has, uh, has not been producing them and they're just not available. Not a big issue if you're willing to look at some other considerations. Now on my previous uh, uh, video you're gonna see that I had taken apart an old uh, case and I was making that into my test bench. Well, <clears throat> this came out of it. Hard drive. Fitting up to, you guessed it, seven hard drives if you want to. Now, inside of my case, this doesn't look like a great option. It's really, it's a hokey one. Pretty flimsy. I'd have to do a lot of retrofitting, a lot of screws. So, uh, went on the internet, tried finding cages, and they just don't exist inside of, there's no 10 cages unless you want to have an external a hard drive bay. Comes my answer. Went online for $25. You can get yourself these beautiful SAS drive cases on eBay. And when you are Looking at this, they are almost the exact dimensions that you would need inside of this. They'll have the handy dandy pop outs where you can put your hard drives in. Well, then, the question is, is okay, so Eric, you've got this set up. What are you going to do with this bad boy in the back? How are you going to take the back plate and make it so that it works if you don't have SAS drives, if you're just going to run it, or a SAS capability on your motherboard? Here's the thing. Two screws, one in the top, one in the bottom. A little retrofitting magic by simply slipping this down. And this plate is now off. So now you've got an enclosure with some studs and some places to screw your hard drives in. Now, Eric, what if you wanted to do more than Two. Well, you take these screws off right here. And then you mount them up top. Now all of a sudden, you get a 10 drive hard drive case that allows you easy access in a very clean and uh, a size appropriate for the case that we're going to be putting this into. When I put this together, you're going to see 
uh, the height restrictions are actually better in this. There is more airflow in the thermal tank. And if you do not need to have this kind of space uh, and you're worried about air uh, cooling, and I'm going to show you a different way of handling the air directions inside of the level 20, you got to stay with these. I'm going to be uh, actually putting these on eBay because they're hard to come by. And since I don't need them anymore, someone's going to be the lucky recipient of them. Um, and and I'll be honest with you, Thermal Takes uh, hard drive cases are just, they're gorgeous. They're really well put together, solid. Um, they allow quite a bit of airflow. You're going to see the difference in the airflow is much different inside of a very enclosed SAS drive uh, cage than with a regular hard drive. These are designed to be hot, <clears throat> but if you can figure out the thermals by re uh, rearranging how the uh, fans are hitting this, you're going to be sitting in a really good spot. So I can't wait to show you how this all comes together. Now, question is, is how do you get these two to interlock? <clears throat> We're going to use the exact same uh, hardware that they've included in this uh, build. And if everything works out correctly, uh, I believe we should be able to grab a hold of it with the, with the small one. So, what do we need to do first? We're going to take all the hard drives out. We're going to label the top. Which one is going to be the top? Which one's going to be the bottom? Get this right. This is the place that needs to have the holes drilled. And these are our holes, so we're going to flip them basically upside down. And then we're going to lock them in to make sure they don't go anywhere. And you do want this to be as accurate as you can. So take your time to make sure that the placement is correct. One of the ways of doing that is inside of the back spot here, these holes are just big enough that you can put a Phillips screwdriver through. And we'll do the same for the front right here. Now, Lock these into place so they don't move on us as we manipulate these holes. <clears throat> now, we don't need that in here anymore. We need to mark the holes through this. Now, you're going to say, well, you know, I can't fit a pencil down there. I could probably take this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have the exact spot that I want. Because when you're coming at, even at this spot right here, even at, if you do this and you draw there, you might be able to get it. One of the other options is to find the exact size inside the hole. And you're going to just pop this straight down. And this is it. We're going to take. little bit of acrylic or you can actually go to your wife's uh, drawer and grab some of her fingernail polish and you can do the same thing and you're literally just going to drop your drill bit right there and tap it and tap it so then we're going to pop this off we're going to take out the screwdriver and literally lift straight up. <clears throat> now I'm going to come over closer to this so you can see what we ended up doing. Let's see if this can come any better. You can see our two white dots right here and right here. That's perfectly centered and that's exactly where we need to drill holes at. So your drill bit should be the exact same one that you used. That would be sufficient for the size, not too big, but your, and if you wanted to go a size bigger so you didn't have any issues and you had a little bit more um, space, that wouldn't be bad at all either. Okay, we are back at it. Um, we're gonna find a drill that will basically get inside 
and just be just a slight bigger than the actual diameter of the hole you're trying to drill into. You can tap these. I'm going to let you know though, if you try tapping these, um, you run the risk of bending this metal and we don't want it to be bent in any way. So my recommendation is make sure that when you start, you start off at the, the speed that you're comfortable with, make sure that it's going to go right where it needs to. When you flip that sucker back over and you put it on, your clearance is going to be a little off. So how do you compensate for the clearance between the bottom of your tray and the top of these? Because these screws are going to be almost, they're about a quarter of an inch, if not just a little bit bigger. How do you make that clearance? Well, it turns out that the screw top is almost the height of this little bracket that comes right in front of it that keeps that suspended and you shouldn't have any issues with it. So you put your cage back together. You'll need to use a smaller screwdriver. Now, one with truth. And slide in your bracket. goes in there and voila now you've got an enclosed case everything is working good okay so now we're going to take a look hopefully I can get this a little bit closer so you can see uh, no gap in between the two shelves we're using only the hardware that they provided and now we got a stable cage the back pieces will you be used uh, we'll take these off and we'll use these uh, to connect with the uh, back plate of the, uh, the level 20. All right, when we get these colored, I'm gonna spray paint them uh, black so they go match the case. We get back together. Um, look forward to uh, seeing you guys again. And uh, once again, thank you for stopping by.